am I to understand, looking at this, that we're back in that bloody swamp? Yes. <laughs> so how sure are you of this? Me? Yeah. Absolutely sure. I don't care how difficult it is. I really don't. I mean, I'll go in there by myself. Like and that, Rick Lagina, is why you are going to find this treasure. We are going to find this treasure. Rick Lagina was forced to evacuate Oak Island after a terrifying discovery at the Money Pit. As he and his team dug deeper, they uncovered strange man-made structures that sent shockwaves through the crew. The findings could be connected to something more valuable or dangerous hidden beneath the island. What could be so alarming that it forced them to abandon their search? We will uncover the hidden corridors of this strange island that will send chills down your spine. Water Trouble Halts the Dig A New Morning has kicked off on Oak Island for Rick, Marty Lagina, and their team. However, they're not jumping straight into treasure hunting today, they've hit a snag over in the Money Pit area. Water is seeping through the walls, which is slowing down their usual digging operations. Everyone's scratching their heads, especially Roger, wondering, where is all this water coming from? Little do they know, the source of the water may hold the key to an even darker thing buried deep beneath Oak Island, a revelation that could change everything they thought they knew. The situation has been made worse by the recent heavy rainfall over southern Nova Scotia. Oddly, this isn't just nature doing its thing, something else seems to be causing a steady flow of water into the garden shaft, which is about 66 feet deep. Even though only 10 inches of rain hit the area, nowhere near the 30 feet they'd normally expect, it raises a big question, could this be some sort of planned flooding? Whether or not this water source is linked to the legendary flood tunnels that have baffled treasure seekers for more than two centuries, it has definitely put a pause on the team's plans for the day. They want to dig further into the garden shaft, from its current depth of 87 feet down to almost 100 feet. Their goal? To uncover an elusive, seven-ton tunnel stretching west towards the Baby Blob, a spot where they've previously found signs of gold, silver, and other valuable metals buried between 80 and 120 feet underground. Interestingly, last year, this exact shaft had almost no water problems. Is it possible that they've stumbled upon the infamous flood tunnel messing with their current efforts? They're digging deeper to figure it out, believing they might be on the verge of a significant discovery. To combat this frustrating water issue, representatives from Dummies Contracting Limited are planning to use exploratory holes they've drilled to inject a substance called multiurethane into the gaps outside the shaft. This substance is pretty impressive, it expands as it dries effectively sealing off any openings. Their hope is to extend the garden shaft up to the top of this newly discovered tunnel. However, this is easier said than done, with 700 gallons of water per hour seeping into the shaft. Solving this problem is crucial if they want to get back to their treasure hunt. Once they manage to seal the area and ensure everything is stable, they plan to dive back into digging. Everyone's keen to see how this will pan out, and Roger has the job of keeping everyone updated as Dummies continues their work in the garden shaft. While Dummies's crew deals with the challenges in the garden shaft, Peter, the team's archaeologist, along with Lindy Martin and other team members, have turned their attention to a curious circular structure near the shoreline on Lot 5. This particular structure has become a central point of interest for the team's investigations into the long-standing questions surrounding Oak Island. After the storm, there were some concerns about the structure's condition, prompting a thorough check. Peter felt confident that they could continue their work there, so the team went ahead and removed the protective covering from the circular structure. Despite being almost a mile from the money pit, this site has given them crucial clues towards solving the island's long-held questions. As they exposed a large, ancient structure, they noticed something resembling a handle poking out from the debris. Recently, researchers have linked this structure to Sir William Phipps, a 17th-century English politician and privateer who, according to tales, hid a cache of Spanish gold and silver in the money pit back in 1687. The excitement among the team spiked and they discovered a lead trading token near the outer edge of the structure potentially related to a 14th-century lead cross found in 2017 at Smith's Cove. The pieces are starting to come together, painting a picture of a rich and interconnected history. 
Despite the setbacks caused by the storm, the archaeologists continued their careful exploration amid the ruins. A scan of the area with magnetometry hinted at a larger, potentially older structure lying beneath the surface. Undeterred by the challenges, the team decided to dig deeper into the past of the island. Driven by their anticipation, the archaeologists believed this circular feature could be crucial in unraveling the long-standing questions of Oak Island as they pressed on with their investigation on Lot 5. After finding new clues in the old structure, the team starts a different search a mile away, where they're getting ready to explore something even more incredible. Aladdin's cave hides the truth a mile away from Lot 5, the team was getting a boat ready for a new exploration. Marty Lagina, driven by his intense curiosity, joined the others at the money pit. They were all buzzing with excitement as they prepared for a sonar scan of a peculiar opening known as Aladdin's Cave, located about 60 feet southwest of the garden shaft. The anticipation was high as they awaited the results from the sonar scan, eager to discover what things lay within Aladdin's cave. With a state-of-the-art Echidna 710 sonar device at their disposal, the team set out on this exploration to better understand the cave structure. Their interest in Aladdin's cave was sparked a year ago during a core drilling operation that revealed a significant void. The sonar data from the western side suggested a potential tunnel entrance, and water samples taken from the cavity showed traces of wood and valuable metals. Just a week before, the team had lowered a camera through a new borehole into the center of the cavern, revealing more indications of potential human-made structures. As the sonar scan continued, Marty and his colleagues aimed to create a detailed three-dimensional map of Aladdin's cave, hoping to confirm its man-made origins and the treasures it might hold. Guiding the scan, they searched for any signs of tunnels or entrances. The sonar images revealed clear, straight lines, challenging the notion that they were natural formations. The atmosphere on the boat was filled with anticipation as they studied the sharp, clear images. A distinct edge caught their attention, prompting them to wonder, could they be on the brink of uncovering a significant man-made structure within Aladdin's cave? The answers remain hidden deep within the island's elusive depths. Back at the money pit, Rick, Marty, and other team members reviewed the latest sonar data, which suggested possible evidence of man-made structures about 150 feet deep in Aladdin's cave. Steve remarked on the unnatural appearance of the straight lines, and Paul agreed. He suggested they'd get a clearer view once Steve integrated them into the three-dimensional model. Terry Matheson believed that the characteristics of this opening would provide invaluable insights into historical excavation and construction techniques below 106 feet in the money pit area. As the conversation unfolded, Rick noticed something intriguing and instructed Paul to adjust the solar diagram. As Paul twirled the object, Terry spotted an angled decline in the cavern, seemingly crafted from sand, which potentially concealed whatever was underfoot. Alongside, another decline masked more undisclosed items beneath. Marty, taking in the view of a notably straight wall along one edge, was quick to surmise that this was undoubtedly the work of human hands, perhaps a hidden storage for valuables. The team's focus was particularly on the cavern's western section, which they believed to be the largest area. Their prime objective? To uncover the origins of this intriguing cavern. Marty was mainly preoccupied with figuring out how to get inside the cavern, and the experts on hand reassured him that tracing the direction of the slope could lead them to an entrance. After some discussion, they all agreed to initiate a drill at this specific spot. Rick, filled with anticipation, was particularly keen to explore what he had affectionately dubbed, Aladdin's Cave, convinced that it held potential riches. But, as is typical with Oak Island Ventures, progress was slow and methodical. Meanwhile, the experts detected subtle echoes from within the cavern, suggesting the presence of an opening. Their plan was to drill towards these echoes and lower a camera to see what insights they could gather, and then decide on their next steps. Rick stressed the importance of conducting a thorough analysis to properly understand what they were dealing with. They discussed the possibility of an additional drilling for a broader exploratory survey. After reaching a consensus, Marty called an end to the day's efforts. 
The excitement was palpable the next day as the team commenced drilling a new hole, creatively named L3.5, positioned strategically to extract more information from Aladdin's cave. Concurrently, efforts were made to prevent water from seeping into the garden shaft. While the team looks deeper into the strange cave, another group is busy studying artifacts that might show more than just pieces of history. Ancient artifacts spark new clues over at the Interpretive Center, a gathering of minds took place involving Craig Tester, Peter Fornetti, Jack Begley, and archaeometallurgist Emma Culligan, alongside blacksmithing expert Carmen Legg.